Today, we're constructing a binary tree from a node list pre-order. This is our pre-order here. Note that we have tildes here, 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 and here. Now these tildes represent null nodes. So that means that is the absence of a node. Now specifically today, we're going over two things. The first thing is completing this problem by hand. And then the second thing is taking those insights and then completing this via code. Now, before we get started, let's look at some truths. So since this is a pre-order, that means that the very first element which is given to us is going to be our root node. So this, this is our root node. That's the first thing that we know about this, right? The second thing that we know about this is that the input data has this format. We have the input data as the node, which is given to us. And then we'll have the left node. And we'll also have its children. So put AC for and its children. And then we'll have the right node. And its children. So this is the format that we have this information encoded. Now that we have that information, now that we have the truths, now that we have the problem, let's do the very first part and let's do this by hand. All right, so let's see. Again, the very first element is our root element. So at the top of our tree, we'll have a six. The element directly to the left is going to be the left node, so therefore we'll have a 3 right here. And then the 2 is going to be the left node of the 3. We have that there. Now look, we have a tilde here and a tilde here. These two tildes indicate to me that this 2 is actually a null node, or not a null node. This means that the 2 is actually a leaf which means that there's nothing here. This is the leaf of this particular path. So once we know that, we will go back up to the three. So we're at the two, we'll go back to the three, and then we'll continue with that path. Go back to the three, we have a five. So this would be the right node of the three, which is a five, and then we're looking at the left node of the 5, which is a 7, with a 7 here. And then we have a tilde, which means the left node of that is non-existent. And then also we have another tilde, which indicates to me that this is another leaf that we have. Therefore, that is the end of that path. And then after that, you go back to the 5, just like you did here. <clears throat> Once you get back to the 5, it looks like the right node of the 5 is a 4. Therefore, you put the 4 on this side right here to the right of the 5. And then just like in the other examples, we have a null node and a null node for this element as a children. Therefore, this 4 is also going to be a leaf as well. Now that we know that this is a leaf, this has concluded the entire path. As you see, the 5 is fully defined and the three is fully defined. Therefore, the next node that we're looking at is going to be the right node of the root element. So we are looking at here, and this is a five. So this entire path right here is represented in the right side or the right node and its children for the six root element. So we'll put the five here on the right side. And then we have a 4. Actually, before we get to the 4, I see that here we have a tilde. What does that mean to me? That means that there is nothing to the left. There's no. Nothing's there. And there's no children to the left. Therefore, we have to define the right side now. And we have a 4 for that. So we come over here. We put the 4. And then we have a tilde and a tilde, which, which represents that we have no children there for the left and right. And therefore, we are done defining this tree. So that's really it. These are the steps that we'll take in taking this information that we have for the pre-order as a node list and then transcribing that into our binary tree. 
And now that we know how to do this by hand, we can take these same insights and then do this via code. And that's exactly what we're going to do next. Now that we've done this by hand, the next process is to create a series of steps that we can do this via code. And really this can be broken down into a couple different steps, really three different steps. The first step is to create a binary tree node. The second step is to create a binary tree. And then the third is to define a method that builds a tree. So let's look into the very first step, which is to create a binary tree node. So we call this step one. Create binary tree node. So our node is quite simple. We'll start off with a class. And by the way, when it comes to the implementation of this, this is being implemented in Python, but you can easily implement this in any language. And there is a lot of overlap, regardless of which language you choose. So this is the binary tree. We'll have an init. And I may skip steps here. And if I do, just overlook those skip steps. But really, I want to focus on the high-level code that we're doing here. We'll do, let's see, we want to take, we need self. But we want to take the data, which is the information that we have at that node. Then we will look at the left. We'll look at the right. And what do we need to have here? So quite simply, we need to define the data for every single node. So every node will have the data. So we'll let data be equal to data. And then we'll repeat this in a similar process and have the left equal to the left. And then we'll have the right equal to the right as well. So again, this is really the first step, which is to ultimately define a node that we're going to be using in the second step. And long story short, this node will have data. It will have a left. It will have a right. So now that we have the single node defined, let's look at what the tree would have. The tree that we need to have needs to have this. So we'll do do class and we'll call it binary tree. And hopefully I'm writing this large enough so you guys can see. It's so a class binary tree. And then we will do an init as well. We'll do the self because this is the function itself. Now, this is what's important. We're going to take in a list. And this list is the list of input. If you have a string, what you want to do is you want to parse that string and then turn that string into a list. And then we will have the null character. This gives us flexibility so we don't have to have the null character being written in stone. Right now, the null character is a tilde. But perhaps we might want the null character to be, who knows, you might want it to be an equal sign. It could be anything, right? So again, that's something that you can define. And this gives us a flexibility. This right here gives us the flexibility to choose what we want the null character to be. All right, so just like the the node itself, we need to define the characteristics of this tree. So we'll do self dot null car which is short for no character. And we'll just define as whatever we initialize that as. So we, we initialize that as the input here, right? And then next we have the node list. This is going to be the list of characters that we have. And in this situation, we are assuming that we have a pre-order, which is important. So again, we are assuming that we have a pre-order node list. And then we have a build index. The reason why we have a build index is because this gives us the capability to 
loop through all of the node values, and then we can refer to it no matter where we are in recursion. You'll see that more later on, but I want to give you guys a preview that this build index is very important, very, very important. This comes into play when we're looping through, not really looping through because we are going to be using recursion for the next step. But again, this allows us to maintain a global index of where we are within the node list here. And then the next thing that we need to define is the root node. So this is a root node. I actually skipped the step, but then I came back and realized that I did not record the root node. But here it is. This is what it looks like here. Simply put, we have a method that we're going to define later on in step three called insert next node. But here, the root node is being defined here. The next step in the process, step three, is to define a method that we can recursively use to build this tree. And we called this method, we called it insert next node. So insert next node, and this is really the magic. This is where a lot of the action is happening. So if you recalled, we have the build index. And the reason why this is so important is because the build index is referring to the node of interest that we're paying attention to. So here we have data, which is extracting a node at the build index. So we have the node list, which is our input right here. And then we will say, okay, what's the input at the build index? So put the build index here. And technically this should be self.build index. Hopefully you guys can see that. There you go, perfect. So self.build index. So we extract that value. And then once we have that value, we will use it to, to create a node. But first, before we create a node, what I'm going to do is I'm going to initialize this node as none. So we're we're creating this temp node and we are initializing this as none. Now that we've initialized the temp node, we're going to check to see if this data that was extracted from the node list is the null character. Do you recall that the null character represents the absence of a node? And if you don't have a node, then we're, we're going to want to keep this as none. We're not going to change that. So we'll have that check here. We'll do if data is not equal to, and hopefully you guys can see this, this is not equal to. So if data is not equal to self dot null car, then do the following. We are going to define the temp node as a binary tree node that we described from step one. With that data. So again, to reiterate what we wrote here, we're saying that if the data is not equal to the null car, which we define, I think this problem with the tilde is a null car, right? So if it's not equal to tilde, we're going to have the temp node be defined using the binary tree node that we defined from step one. All right. Now that we have that, the next part of this process is to iterate, or I should really say increment, not iterate. We're going to increase the increment. So right now we have the build index at zero because that's the very first value that we have assigned to that. We're going to increase that by one. So we'll do self dot build index. plus equal to one. So again, we start off at zero, then we'll increment to the next. Do notice that this method is called insert next node. And this is an important point because it's always looking at the very next node. If your current node is zero, this is going to be looking at one. If your current node is one, this is going to be looking at two. So it's always going to the next item, which is in this self.node list, which is your input. All right. Now, what we're going to do here is if the temp node was not none, so we'll do if temp node exists, we're going to do some more assignments here. So if temp node 
is not none, we're gonna define the left node by whatever we have for the insert next node. And I'm gonna get into this a little bit more, I just wanna write it down first. Perfect. And same thing here, we'll do the same thing for the right. So temp node dot right is equal to the same thing as above, self dot insert next node. Now, one of the questions that you may have is why? Why am I writing this? Why do I put the left before the right? Why is it here? Let me answer those questions. The reason why we're writing this in this fashion is because do keep in mind that we're working with the pre-order and we have to we have to adhere to that format. With the pre-order, the data is encoded with this fashion. We have the node and then we have the left and all its children. I'm writing AC for all its children. And then we have the right and all the children of the right. Because it's encoding in this fashion, we have to follow the same format when we're inserting the next node. We have to, one, define the, the node, define the temp node, and that's what we're doing here. And then two, we have to assign the left node, and that's what we're doing here. And then three, we have to then assign the right. So this is a really important standpoint because if we were to put this out of order, it would completely be wrong. We have to make sure that the order at which we are assigning the left and right matches the order of the input. Now, if the if the input were given to us as a post order, which is different, we would have to change the orders that we have here for defining the node and defining the left and right. So do keep that in mind. If you had a different kind of problem or if the if the input, I should say, were different, do keep in mind that that would affect when we assign the temp node, the temp node left and the temp node right. So that's a very important point that I want to bring up. All right, next, now that we have fully determined what the temp node is and determined their left and right, the next thing that we want to do is we want to return it. So we're going to return the temp node. If you see here, do you see how we have insert next node and then it's actually returning something? It's always returning the node of interest. So the node that it creates, it's returning that. So we're doing the same thing here. It's always going to returning, it's always going to return that node. The very first node that we have is a six. In fact, the input that we have, the input, let me write this in the black marker. We had the, what, we had the six, the three, the two, tilde, tilde, and let's see, what else did we had? We had the five, seven. So I won't write the whole thing, but I wanna show you something here. So the, the very first node that we look at will be six. We'll come through here. Six is not the null character. Therefore, we're gonna enter this code block. We're gonna define that temp node here. Because that temp node does exist, it's going to bring us here. We will then define the left. The left of this is going to be looking at the next node, which is a three. The three does exist. We come back here. Again, this is working recursively. This three will be defined here. We'll increase the build index to one, and then we'll come within this block here. And then notice that when we're on the three node, it's going to say, hey, three node, insert your left. That's gonna bring us here. Keep in mind that we incremented the, bin, the build index plus one, therefore we're looking at the two. The two is gonna insert its left, which is this null, and it's gonna come through here. It's gonna say, let's see, we have the null character. Therefore, it's still gonna increment, yes, but here it's not gonna do any signing of the left and right. So I'm gonna skip that. It's gonna return that none and then we're going to be looking at the right node for the two which is going to be right here it's going to do the same thing and return none then after that we will go back to the three 
and then we'll be here looking at the right of the three, which is going to be the five. So the reason why I want to show you this is because I want to show you what's happening inside. I want to show you the mechanics of how this code is working inside. And I think you see the pattern here. Again, I really invite you to play with the code. I have a Python code that's included here. I invite you to use a Python code and kind of debug it and play around with it. You'll see some really cool things. But yeah, this is step three in a nutshell. This is how that works.